Hello! <laughs> Excuse me for one minute while I indulge myself just where I am. Two weeks from Christmas, I flew this morning to Malaga in southern Spain to hop in the brand new Audi RS4. And the roads are phenomenal. What I didn't mention was when I left England, it was snowing. Anyway, welcome. Very special moment indeed. We are back with Audi now. Listen, this is totally unintentional. I know the channel has been very Audi heavy lately. It's just the way it's landed. Regardless, this is a big moment. Now, for Audi fans, and particularly for RS aficionados, the RS4, I believe, has always had a very special place in Audi history. Now, a little bit about the lineage and what has evolved recently within Audi themselves. I wouldn't go so far as to say that Quattro has gone, but in days gone by, Quattro was always the stamp of performance from Audi. But however, in recent years, Audi has gone through somewhat of a rebrand. And now basically anything that comes out of Audi that is fast uh, is under the name of Audi Sport. Uh, Quattro, of course, still exists uh, in its fantastic all-wheel drive system. Uh, but this is now an Audi Sport product. And what's changed? Well, interestingly, power is still exactly the same, 440 Four brake horsepower is in the outgoing naturally aspirated V8. Which is odd, you might think that's a strange new car, you should up the performance. However, and bear with me on this, engine has actually downsized. Now we shouldn't be too surprised at that just because that's the way the world is going. And diehard RS fans might be huffing and puffing and going, what is going on with the world? However, with the downsizing in engine capacity is the upsizing in torque. And that is where turbo tech and really where that twisting power that you get from torque is what we feel through our receptacles as a human. It's all about torque. That's what gives us that feeling of thrust when we mash our foot on the right hand pedal. So this car is actually up by 125 pounds feet of torque. A very similar figure to its brake horsepower. It's pushing out 443 pounds feet of torque and 444 brake horsepower. Um, now, that might not seem a great deal, but honestly, upon dropping a cog in this eight speed automatic gearbox, we'll get on to that shortly, uh, the torque is wonderful. Now, I wouldn't say it's exactly organ bending, but <laughs> the main thing is, the Quattro system puts it down with the traction of a sticky JCB. It's like they've just gone and put super glue on some tracks and hit it to the asphalt. It's got so much traction. The great thing about downsizing an, an engine, in my eyes, is mostly about downsizing the weight. So with two less cylinders, smaller engine, smaller weight. Um, now, I haven't got the previous car fresh in my mind and fresh in my feel, but I do recall that car feeling a tad on the heavy side. Uh, now, I don't know if that's the witchcraft that they've done with this steering setup. It does feel very light, but the whole car, it just dances just a lot nicer. It sort of floats along the undulations of the road much better than the previous car. Audi are telling me weight savings are around about 80 kilos over the previous generation car. Uh, of course, we've got an entirely new chassis <laughs> because it's based on the brand new A4 chassis, which, you know, as a platform to base a car on is already brilliant. But now you're mating it to an RS product. <laughs> yeah. Steer that was ever so prevalent. Ooh, the torque is thick. Yeah, the understeer, nightmares of old, appear. Let's just check out this left. It's all right. It's there, but I think it's there as a bit of a sort of safety net rather than it just not being set up properly. Yeah, I mean, if you if you carry some braking into the corner, it's planted. It is great. Now, of course, I mean, honestly, I'm driving this road fairly swift right now. We have to remember the platform we're in as well. This thing has, you know, space for the family. A boot for DIY. 
and traction for snow. And here we are on this absolutely brilliant mountain road, throwing it around. The color on this car, Sonoma Green, I would spec this. I would actually spec it. It looks so good. I'm not sure if the camera's doing it justice or not. Ooh, yeah, the understeer is fine, guys. I mean, that was a that was a, a tight corner. <laughs> but what I would say is carry some braking in with it just to keep that weight on the front. If you accelerate a little too early, and I guess this applies to most cars, you are gonna get the front end wash out somewhat. But now it's there for you, it's there. Tires, now for whatever reason, um, the new RS4 is running Hankook tires. Now I've got nothing against Hankook, uh, but it does seem an odd choice. I can't help but feel Hankook have done them quite a good deal to get the rubber on these rims. Um, however, as you've seen just then, you wouldn't want to be going much quicker than that, I can assure you. And they're great. The bite is really nice. You know, the tires, ultimately, it doesn't matter what tech you've got in your car, it ultimately all goes through a piece of rubber that big, and these Hankooks seem to be dealing with it beautifully. Okay, this is a bit of a sore point for me, because if you watch this channel regularly, you'll know that I'm somewhat of a gearbox snob. Um, we aren't twin clutch in this. I I don't know why, I just expected Audi, because it's now this car falls under the Audi Sport product category, I thought they might have put in something that was a little bit more of driver focused. However, Audi have opted with their eight speed auto. As you've seen, dealing with it very nicely indeed. Uh, it's not my preference, but ultimately 95% of the time you're not going to find yourself lucky enough to be on roads like this. I've gone very much out of my way to hunt down these magnificent, basically like Spanish Alps, just to test out the dynamics of this car. That gearbox didn't skip a beat. I was very much on it, changed when I wanted to. It's not a razor sharp shift, but the number one thing, and this is what I care about the most, it changes down exactly when you want it to change down. Now, I haven't driven this car in auto at all, but I don't need to. I know Audi's eight-speed auto is mapped beautifully for just dailying around in automatic. I wanna know what this thing is like when you put it into dynamic. Is it dynamic? Is it RS? Gearbox, yes, it hits. The, it does hit the spot, and importantly, okay, it ticks the box for down changing exactly when you want it to, but it doesn't quite have that super crisp slamming it home like you would do from dual clutch. But then again, this isn't an R8, it's an RS4, and smiles per gallon so far are disproportionately high. Do you know, for me, as soon as you step out of the realms of a car for practical reasons, smiles is massive. You know, having a good time in it, being dynamically capable so you can thread it through, you know, roads like this that might present themselves, or if, you know, you might have a really boring drive home from work, but you have that one country road that you look forward to every morning and every evening, if that car helps you maximize the potential of any given road, you're winning, you know? And you've seen it firsthand. We just nailed that road. It was absolutely fantastic. Now, aesthetics are subjective. However, my point of view is this is the best looking RS4 yet. And I know opinions are opinions, but it's just so much more aggressive. Back at the hotel, they've got every generation of RS4 lined up. This this car, the aesthetic of it, just looks it, like they jump two steps on rather than one. I think the evolution has been pretty gradual throughout the RS4 series, but the DNA on this, I think they injected a little bit of shark into it. It is looking a lot more aggressive. I'm really thankful for, for that. I think if you're buying into an RS product, you definitely want it to suggest that the car is a little bit more aggressive. It's not for the pleasure of everyone else's eyeballs. It's for those moments at the end of the day or the supermarket car park where you lock the car and you walk away and you just take one last glance over your shoulder. That's when you know you're in something a little bit tasty. And I'm finding that with this car, particularly in Sonoma Green. It looks fantastic. But in the sun, the metallic fleck is gorgeous. If they end up doing the next, next RS6 available in Sonoma Green, I'm going Sonoma Green and gold wheels. Don't hold me to that, but probably. <laughs> now, I know this goes without saying, but I think it would do this car disservice if we didn't talk about the interior quality, uh, small touches 
for me. What I really like is that they've gone Audi exclusive on this particular car and they've had matching green stitching to the Sonoma green bodywork on the outside. Uh, I've noticed spending a lot more time recently, as you'll know, with Audi, um, their attention to detail is actually much higher than I think we give them credit for, particularly on their exclusive series, the, the things they do. I'm not sure if you've seen on the seat belts of the R8 V10 Spider, there's an option to have microphones stitched into the seat belt so that you can make a clear phone call when the roof is down. It's a really nice touch. It's something you probably wouldn't ever see if someone didn't point it out to you. Uh, but it's these little details that Audi are really starting to improve their game and uh, yeah I think it's something that if you're around any posh Audis keep an eye out for all of these little tweaks uh, that, that just sort of elevate it above the standard car. So there we have it. Now because I was driving this car with enthusiasm uh, it's the whole time it has been in dynamic. Now at times it has been a little bit stiff but of course the beauty of Audis and I should say the beauty of RS products is you can go from raging dynamic to pretty chilled comfort mode with literally the flick of a switch. I absolutely love that about RS products. It's like one moment you can attack this road like nobody's business. I referred to my RS6 as a tarmac terrorist and that DNA filters down all the way to this car. But the moment that I just want to chill and take in this sunset, there's few cars that switch personalities as well as an RS car, and I really appreciate that. You know, ultimately, it's very nice driving these cars on these fantastic roads, but back home when you just want to chill and you're stuck in traffic and, you know, you might be on the motorway, it's just nice. Everything calms down, the valves and the exhaust close, and it's tranquility. And on that note, I'll take this opportunity to sign off. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Ciao.